while seated lift up your right hand and say one word to God tonight father do something new in my life speak to me speak to me do something new in my life Jesus precious name so shall it be in Jesus name I want to welcome everyone here to the glory dome tonight welcome everyone watching from all around the world welcome our pastors who are here for our meeting the Lord bless everyone tonight in Jesus precious name what a faithful God we serve. What awesome testimonies we see all the time. We say to him be the glory in Jesus name. This evening I'm going to speak very quickly on the subject. Dedication to kingdom service. Dedication to kingdom service. Our objective is to understand what kingdom service is all about. Dedication to kingdom service. Exodus chapter 23, verse 25, all the way to verse 27. He said, And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. There shall nothing cast their young nor be barren in thy land. The number of your days. I will fulfill. You shall serve the Lord your God. Most of the giants in scripture were referred to as the servants of God. Service to God was a distinguishing identity of their lives. It is not possible for a person to be truly spiritual and not serve. Looking at examples number one, Abraham... In Genesis chapter 26 verse 24 God was speaking to Isaac the Lord appeared to him the same night I said I am the God of Abraham your father fear not for I am with thee and will bless thee and multiply your seed for my servant Abraham's sake my servant my servant Abraham was referred to by God as his servant. Psalm 105, in verse 40 to 43, we also saw the people asked and he brought quails and satisfied them with the bread of heaven. He opened the rock and the waters gushed out. They ran in the dry places like a river. For he remembered his holy promise and Abraham his servant and he brought forth his people with joy and is chosen with gladness so abraham his servant our second example is moses exodus chapter 4 and in verse 10 god speaking and moses said unto the lord oh my lord i am not eloquent neither here to fall nor since you had spoken unto your servant. Since you spoke to your servant. Exodus chapter 14 verse 31. Again we saw and Israel saw the great work which the Lord did upon the, the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Numbers chapter 12 verse 6 to 8. When God was rebuking Miriam. He said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I the Lord will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a, a dream. But my servant Moses is not so. Servant Moses. Deuteronomy 34 verse 5. 
The Bible said that Moses, the servant of the Lord, died. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died. There in the land of Moab, Moses, the servant of the Lord. Abraham was the servant of the Lord. Moses was the servant of the Lord. In Joshua chapter 5, verse 13 to 14, when the captain of the Lord's army stood, it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, are you for us or for our adversaries? And he said, nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord, am I now come? And Joshua fell on his face on the earth and did worship and said unto him, what says my Lord unto his servant? Abraham was servant. Moses was servant. Joshua was servant. What about David? In Psalm 78 and in verse 70. Psalm 78 and in verse 70. The Bible said he chose David also his servant. And took him from the sheepfolds. He chose David his servant. Psalm 89 verse 3. He also referred to David. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn unto David my servant. Verse 20 said, I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. That was David, God's servant. What about Daniel? Daniel chapter 6 and in verse 16. Nebuchadnezzar commanded and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. The, the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God whom thou servest continually, he will deliver you. In verse 20, he came with a lamentable voice and he said to Daniel, and the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee? From the lions whom thou servest. That was Daniel. What of Paul the apostle? In Romans chapter 1 verse 1. Paul the servant of the Lord. Paul a servant of Jesus Christ. Paul a servant of Jesus Christ. Called to be an apostle. Separated unto the gospel of God. Paul a servant. Titus chapter 1 and in verse 1 also. We saw again Paul, a servant of God, a servant of God, a servant of God. Finally, our master Jesus, in the book of John chapter 9 and in verse 4, we saw again the life of Jesus. He said, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day, the night cometh when no man can walk. Beloved brothers and sisters, we are here tonight to recruit authentic servants people that the world can know that this man is a servant of, of God this woman is a servant of God is God speaking to anybody at all that is why we are in this month of dedication now what Does service entail? Now, these are facts. All right. Let, let's go to facts about service. Number one, service is proof of submission. Anybody who is truly submitted to God will serve God. Service is proof of submission. It is proof of loyalty. You gladly serve anyone you are submitted to. You gladly serve anyone you consider higher than yourself. If we are truly submissive to God, we will serve him. Number two, service is proof of dedication. Service is proof of dedication or commitment. Friends serve each other. As a proof of their commitment to their relationship. You can change your friend's tire if it went flat. Or run errands for your friend because you are committed. Service is proof of dedication. If a person is dedicated to God, he will serve God. Number three, service is proof of value. Is proof of worship. Proof of value. 
You gladly serve whom you value. You despise whom you disvalue. In Matthew chapter 4 verse 10, Jesus speaking said unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord your God, and him only shalt thou serve. Service is proof of submission. Service is proof of dedication. Service is proof of value. And of course, number four, service is proof of affection. Proof of love. One of the love languages, my wife is a specialist in the subject of love languages. She teaches it all the time. One of the love languages is called the language of service, acts of service. When my children were, 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 were much younger than this, like toddlers, two years, five years and so on. At times I come and they will rush at me. One is pulling the shoe, one is losing the tie. They want to do something to show they love their daddy. Service is proof of love and affection. You can't claim to love God if you are not interested in serving him. You can't claim to value God if you are not interested in serving him. You cannot claim to be dedicated to God if you are not interested in serving him. You cannot claim to be submissive to God if service is not your interest. The truth is that there are people who come to church for donkey years. And there is nothing they have done in that church to show that they have a relationship with God. Nothing. See the dignified gentleman talking about going to the street today to evangelize and then see the arm robbers, former arm robbers, that gave their lives to Christ and are not ashamed or afraid to say we were robbers. These are facts about service. Now, what is the meaning of service? What is service all about? Number one, the service is the meeting of needs or the filling of gaps. The meeting of needs or the filling of gaps. We say someone is doing service when, for example, in the church setting, he identifies needs that could be filled, met, or gaps that could be filled. Secondly, service is the offering of help, kindness, or assistance. In practical terms, where can I be of help? Where can I be of assistance? Service is the offering of help. Kindness or assistance. Someone was stranded on the road and you decided to assist them. You give them direction. It is the offering of help. Kindness or assistance. Thirdly, service is the making of a difference. Or the addition of value. A person who serves makes a difference. As an usher, as a counselor, as a, a music person, it is the making of, the, of, of a difference or the addition of value. That is, by being involved, a difference was made. Number four, service is the offering of satisfaction. Or the creation of fulfillment. In this case, when we are doing kingdom service, we are giving satisfaction to our maker. We are creating fulfillment. It's the offering of satisfaction, the creation of fulfillment. Like the father said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Number five, service is the running of errands. Addiction to errands. When a person is of service to God, service to man, he is on standby for errands. Here am I, use me. Here am I, send me. 
addiction to errands. Number six, service is availability for instruction or readiness for others. You are available to be instructed. You are ready to be ordered. In kingdom service, you are saying, Lord, here am I, available, whatever you want. I am ready to be ordered. Finally, service is the deployment of effort, time, and ability to offer solution. The deployment of effort, time, and ability to offer solution. So what is service? What is kingdom service? Available to meet kingdom needs. Offering help, assistance, kindness where necessary. What is kingdom service? You are making a difference. Not just sitting in indifference. You are adding value to the kingdom. What is kingdom service? You are giving Jehovah satisfaction. You are creating fulfillment. What is kingdom service? You are on standby to run errands. I remember when our church was younger, there were people who were so addicted to service that they were the same person that would be, be doing almost everything. The same person. And when you think of getting something done, just a few people come to mind because of how addicted they are to service. How addicted they are to running errands. It's the running of errands, the addiction. Even in the family, you know, that when you want to get some done, some jobs done very quickly, there are children or, or there are individuals you call on. I mean, it's very clear. If you want to get it done very quickly, it always happens. It's the running of errands. I remember the story a woman told us some time ago in a meeting. She was the chief executive of a big bank in Nigeria. She said she was born as twin. As a twin. And when they were growing up, her second twin, standing and watching her wash place and do everything and when it was time for anybody to be sent they would send her this one would just be standing and be watching at the end of the day they grew up one became an influential big billionaire woman notable in the nation and global the other one became irrelevant insignificant nobody knew her because she was just there people that serve can never end small i'm coming to that shortly service is the running of errands is addiction to errands that was number six and number number five six is we said that service is availability for instructions you are ready ready my ears are open readiness for others and of course finally you deploy your effort you deploy your time you deploy your energy to offer solutions when i gave my life to christ I was in a hurry to do something for God when I rededicated my life to Christ. I told you the story that was in the year of 1986. I rededicated my life to Christ. It was a deeper life campus fellowship. I said it recently. I went into the fellowship and cleaned up the place before the others came. And then stood outside and began to welcome people. This was my first time. And that is why I will show you qualifications for service. What are the qualifications? What makes people to serve? Number one is the heart of humility. The absence of arrogance or pride. The heart of humility. Proud people never succeed as servants. The heart of humility. You sent me a clip some time ago of a, a young man who saw a lady, dignified lady, cleaning church. Cleaning in church. Washing seats and cleaning things in church. And this young man came to him and said, he walked with his hand in pocket like this. I said, young lady, why are you wasting your time in church? Why are you wasting your time cleaning? 
It looks like it's because you don't have a job that you are working here. Follow me. Do you need a job? Follow me. Let me give you compliment my complimentary card. And then they went into his car that was parked. You see, the car they normally call pure water. One rickety, tanquetic, microscopic, infinitesimal, almost mortuary bound car. And while the man was trying to give him complimentary card to, I wish I read it before I came out here today. So she co he collected the complimentary card and gave her, him her own card. And he took it from her own car that was a machine. <laughs> and he told him, he said, so where do you work? He said, I don't work for anybody. People work for me. People work for me. People work for me. That is why I'm here. You know, in those days, people think that it is only those who don't have anything to do with their lives that serve God. That is why they can't look down on us today. I trained as a medical doctor. Stranger, complete stranger to failure. My wife, medical doctor. We have professors preaching here today. Pastor Adebo is PhD in mathematics. BSc mathematics. MSc mathematics. Molecular dynamics. PhD. Mathematics. Stokes equation. And, and you see, God's servant Bishop Yedepo, trained and erudite architect with a doctorate degree and doctorate in human resource management. Am I communicating at all? But we need that heart of humility. I am trusting God for the time where billionaires will be in the sanctuary cleaning. cleaning. And they are cleaning the churches. And, and, and nobody is aware that they are in billions. And there are people like that here. God is raising. If you are among them, say loud, amen. amen. I am looking forward to the time where ministers, cabinet ministers, and people serving God, serving God in one position or the other, are standing in church as usher. Today, somebody may think that being a minister or a governor means you don't do anything. Until you retire or until you lose that position, then you become serious with God. You are getting serious too late. We need that heart of humility. That heart of humility. That heart where nobody knows who you are. Until they discover so you are like this. And you are serving. Somebody say a loud amen. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Is God speaking to anybody at all? The heart of humility is number one qualification. You remember when First Chronicles chapter 29 verse 14. I need to look at David. That was his strength. Humility. He told God who am I and what is my people? That we should be able to offer so willingly. Who am I? Who am I, Lord? That is the secret of serving. The heart of humility. Number two, the passion to make a difference or to meet a need. The passion to make a difference. The passion to meet a need. That in your heart of heart, you know that you cannot be in a place and not make a difference. That you are a plus factor. You are a change agent. You don't just fill spaces. You make meanings. First Samuel chapter 17 verse 26. David looked at Goliath and said, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he will defy the armies of the living God? Who? I can't stand there and watch things degenerate and decay. You want to make a difference. Is God speaking to somebody here? Personally, I cannot drive past and see paper around these premises and, and keep driving. I, 
It's not possible. It's not possible. And see pure water, something or black lead. It's not possible. I've stopped on the road many times at, at, at the gate area, area. Stop to pick paper. And my wondering is why can somebody pass beside the paper and not see it? When I see people eat corn and throw it out of vehicle moving, I, it, it worries my body. Say this one is throwing meat for who to carry. When I see people throw away biscuit wrap, neatly suited man throwing away things out of his car. Those are the people contributing to the problem that others are trying to solve. In the same manner, you find yourself in the assembly of the saints and it is not possible to just sit at the receiving end. The passion to make a difference. The passion to meet needs. And finally, is genuine love and affection for God. Those were the things that we found in David. When you genuinely love God, you want to spend and be spent for God. David's secret in Psalm 27 verse 5 he said one thing have I alright verse 4 one thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me and he shall set me upon a rock that was his passion for God so when you see people lethargic, cold, lukewarm, dragging their feet to do things for God, is it that the heart of humility is lacking? Or the desire to make a difference or meet needs are lacking? There are those who are just existing. Or genuine love and affection for God does not exist. When your heart is on fire for God, nobody will ask you. We have generals who stand on the, at the junction controlling traffic frequently. We have people of all levels do menial things. And you look at them and wonder, why? Fire for God. Now, what is the profit of service? Is, anybody, is God speaking to anybody at all? At the end of this day, please don't do yourself the injustice of sitting and doing nothing. What is the profit of kingdom service? Number one, kingdom service brings completion to life. Completion. God identifies what is lacking in your life by himself and fills it up by your service. Kingdom service brings completion to life. God himself will identify what is lacking in your life and fills it up. Genesis chapter 2 verse 8. God gave Adam the garden to till. And then in verse 18, God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. He gave him work and while the man was walking, he identified something that was lacking in the man's life. Kingdom service brings completion. I was madly serving God when God reminded me that I needed to start praying concerning my life partner. It was God who brought it to my attention. While every other person, their focus was who to marry. We were focused on what to do for God. And God said, now, I want to bring completion into your life kingdom service it brings
brings completion. God identifies what is lacking in your life and he fills it up. I prophesy to somebody here, as you serve God passionately and aggressively, whatever is lacking in your life today shall be filled up. Shout the Lord, amen. Number two, kingdom service attracts the blessing of God. It attracts supernatural supplies. Exodus 23, 25, you shall serve the Lord and he shall bless your bread. You shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless your bread. It attracts the blessing. You are not permitted to, to struggle for survival as you serve God passionately. I like you to know that service is a covenant. As you serve the Lord, he blesses you. And if you don't make demands on the, on the covenant part of it, you can just be serving for nothing. And the devil doesn't care for as long as you do things. If you, are not, if you don't know the revelation behind the things you do, it doesn't, matter. it doesn't matter what you do. For as long as he knows you are not aware of the revelation behind what you do, he can just keep you to do it. Service attracts the blessing of God attracts supernatural supplies number three kingdom service 